Hi, welcome back to Physics from Fork SSM. So we continue chapter 4 heat on topic 4.2 understanding specific heat capacity. Let's get started. Okay, look at this situation. The sun heats up the sand and the seawater at the same period of time. However, sand gets hot quickly and the seawater gets hot slowly. As the boy saying that the sand is hot. And this one, the seawater is cold. So how can you explain this situation? So under this topic, we are going to explain what exactly happened and the concept involved that is heat capacity. Okay, now look at the idea of heat capacity. A pail of water from a swimming pool has been left for several hours beside the pool. At noon, a lifeguard puts one hand in the water of the swimming pool and then into the pail. He found that the water in the pail is hotter than the water in the swimming pool. So what, what does he infer from the uh, observation? So the inference is a body with a larger mass requires more heat to raise its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. In the case of the swimming pool, it contains of large amount of water, meaning larger mass of water. So it needs more heat to raise its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So it up, heats up slower as compared to the water in the pail. The water in the pail has smaller mass. Right? Okay, look at here. Different materials store different amount of heat energy. When we talk about different type of material, example, coal and water. Say we have one kilogram of coal and one kilogram of water. So water takes about 30 times longer to heat than coal. So the coal heats up faster compared to water. So meaning different type of material store different amount of heat energy. Okay, look at this one. We have a kettle what con uh, contains one liter of water and here is two liter of water. Let the water boil. We observe that the kettle with a small amount of water, that is one liter, the water will boil faster compared to two liter of water. The water in a full kettle takes a longer time to boil compared to the water in a half filled kettle. This shows that water of bigger mass has a higher heat capacity compared to water of smaller mass, meaning it requires more heat energy in order to increase its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, what is the definition for heat capacity? So heat capacity, we use a symbol capital C. The heat capacity of a body is the amount of heat that must be supplied to the body to increase its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So from the definition, we can write a formula for heat capacity, C equivalent to amount of heat, eh? we use the symbol capital Q or quantity of heat supplied. To increase temperature by 1 degree Celsius means per unit temperature. So that's why we have here C equivalent to Q divided by delta theta. Delta theta means change in the temperature. The symbol like a triangle here is a symbol for change or difference in temperature. So the unit for heat capacity based on the formula here, quantity of heat is joule. Delta theta is degree Celsius, then we can write C equivalent to joule degree Celsius to the power negative 1. The change in temperature also can be stated in Kelvin because uh, the value change in temperature are same eh, when you use Kelvin or degree Celsius. So meaning the unit that can be used for heat capacity is also joule Kelvin negative 1, same. Eh? Okay, now look at this one. We have material A, aluminium. Eh? A and B, aluminium, and C is plumbum. A, 2 kg of aluminium. B, 4 kg of aluminium. C, 4 kg of plumbum. Okay, look at here. 
2 kg aluminium needs 1,800 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius in temperature. B. 4 kg aluminium needs 3,600 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius of temperature. And then for C, plumbum needs 520 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius in temperature. Okay, for first part, let's look at A and B for same material, uh, aluminium, but different in mass. So as you can see here, based on the observation here, we can conclude that larger mass of aluminium requires more heat to increase temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So the larger the mass of the substance, the larger the heat capacity needed. So meaning this 4 kg requires more heat capacity yeah, compared to 2 kg aluminium. Okay, now you look at between B and C, same mass, 4 kg, but different type of material. So you can see here, aluminium requires 3,600 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius of temperature. But the plumbum for same mass needs only 520 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius in temperature. So what we can conclude from this observation so the 4 kg of plumbum requires less heat to increase temperature by 1 degree Celsius as compared to 4 kg of aluminium. So we can conclude that for same mass of material, the different type of material requires different heat capacity. So from this activity, what we can say about the factors that affect heat capacity? So we can say that the heat capacity of an object depends on mass of the object. An object with larger mass will have a larger heat capacity than an object with smaller mass of same material. Second, type of material. Different material have different heat capacities. Okay, now there's a daily situation involving heat capacity. Look at this one, the first one. After being left to cool for some time, the soup in a large bowl is hotter compared to the same soup in a small bowl. Now, we have discussed before that the heat capacity or amount of heat required to increase 1 degree Celsius of temperature depends on mass. So the large bowl of soup okay, contains more heat capacity compared to the small bowl of soup. Second, at noon, there is a significant difference in temperature between cement cord and grass. So there are two different types of material, cord and grass. So they, they will have different heat capacity. Okay? So heat capacity also depends on type of material. Okay, the third one, why do the metal parts of the car get really hot while the plastic and other materials stay at more bearable temperature? Let's say you park the, your car under hot sun. Of course, eh, the body of the car is very hot. Even you try to touch the body, it's very hot. But if you touch the, the part which is uh, made of plastic, that one is more bearable temperature. It's not really hot, eh, that part. So this one also explained that heat capacity depends on type of material. Okay. Okay, now we want to discuss what is specific heat capacity. We just add one word before heat capacity, so it becomes specific heat capacity. Now the symbol is small c. So what is the definition for specific heat capacity? C of the substance, quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram mass of substance by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, did you detect the difference uh, in definition eh, between specific heat capacity and heat capacity? So for heat capacity, we have discussed earlier, is amount of heat required to increase temperature of substance by 1 degree Celsius. No mention about 1 kg mass. But for specific heat capacity, need to mention 1 kilogram of mass. Okay. Thus, the formula for specific heat capacity, we have small c equivalent to amount of heat required per unit mass per unit change in temperature. So we have C equivalent to Q divided by M delta theta. Okay, now look at the 
what is uh, the symbol means uh, for Q uh, heat supply or release the unit is joule M is mass of substance unit kilogram Delta theta is temperature difference. It can be temperature rise or decrease in temperature. The unit is degree Celsius. We can also use Kelvin eh, because same value, eh, temperature difference in Kelvin or temperature. Okay, the small c, specific heat capacity. So the unit for specific heat capacity is Joule per kg per degree Celsius. So we get Joule kg negative 1 or degree Celsius negative 1. Or you can write also Joule kg negative 1, Kelvin negative 1. Okay. Okay, now look at the exercise 1. What does it mean by specific heat capacity of aluminium is 900 Joule per kg per degree Celsius? What does the value mean? It means that 1 kg of aluminium requires 900 joule of heat to raise its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, so for each of 1 kg substance, the value of the specific heat capacity shows how many joules of energy required eh, for 1 kg mass to increase temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, okay now look at we have B and C. B, 1 kilogram of aluminium. C is 1 kilogram of plumbum. For B, aluminium needs 900 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius of temperature. Plumbum needs 130 joule of heat to increase 1 degree Celsius of temperature. So from here, because of B and C, the mass is 1 kilogram. Thus, we can make conclusion that specific heat capacity of aluminium is 900 joule kg negative 1 degree Celsius negative 1 and specific heat capacity of plumbum is 130 joule kg negative 1 degree Celsius negative 1. So what are the factors that affect specific heat capacity? So from here, we can say that specific heat capacity does not depend on mass but depends on only type of material. So ty mat different type of material will have different specific heat capacity and the value is already constant. Okay, so you can look at the, the, the relationship between heat capacity, capital C, and specific heat capacity of a substance, small c. Okay, we have discussed earlier heat capacity capital C equivalent to Q divided by delta theta. So this one we put as formula 1. Specific heat capacity, small c equivalent to Q divided by M delta theta. So this one we mark as formula 2. Okay, now we want to relate uh, between capital C and small c, uh, heat capacity and specific heat capacity. From equation 2, we rearrange the formula so C equals 1 over M bracket Q divided by delta theta. From 1, Q divided by delta theta is capital C or heat capacity. So we substitute here. Thus we get heat capacity capital C equivalent to mass multiplied specific heat capacity. So we have this formula. So this one relates between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. So from here we can say uh, the specific heat capacity does not depend on mass. Heat capacity depends on mass. Okay? So amount of heat required also be, can be calculated from equation 2. So we have Q equivalent to MC delta theta. Or some most of the book just write down Q equivalent to MC theta. So need to understand what is meant by theta. Uh. Theta is temperature difference or change in temperature. Okay, so this table shows uh, the value of specific heat capacity for different type of material. So we have liquid, gas, metal, non-metal. So you can see here for liquid, eh, normally liquid has very large specific heat capacity compared to metal or solid. Okay, so you can look at the water, 4200 joule per kg per degree Celsius, the highest value. Okay, for liquid. 
So no need to memorize all the value. Eh? If there is a problem solving, they will give you eh, the value. Okay, now. Next, we have an experiment eh, for you all to determine specific heat capacity of water and determine specific heat capacity of aluminium. Okay, so you can refer to your textbook on page 1 to 9. Okay, so the first activity you want to determine specific heat capacity of water. Apparatus and material, power supply, immersion heater, beaker, stopwatch, thermometer, retort stand, electronic balance, water and tissue paper. So look at the arrangement. Arrangement here. So we have a beaker. Okay, you put some water inside and then uh, put in immersion heater that connect to the power supply and then a thermometer okay, that hang from a retort stand. Okay, so cover the beaker with a tissue paper in order to prevent heat loss to surrounding. Okay, so when you turn on the switch, you need to record uh, all the uh, temperature reading of the water. So what we need to record in the table here, okay, you record what is a power of emission heater, P, uh, watt. So you can refer to the label, uh, some, most of the emission heater, there will be a label, uh, so power in what? Heating time. What is the total time taken needed for the process? Mass of water, m kilogram. So you can weigh the mass. Initial temperature, record theta 1. Okay. And then the final temperature after heating time uh, that you have already set is theta 2. Okay. Now from the table that we have record all the readings here, Calculate the specific heat capacity of water using the formula C equivalent to Q divided by M delta theta. So in this case, the amount of heat supply equivalent to power multiplied time of heating. So Q equals to PT. And change in temperature equivalent to final temperature minus initial temperature. So theta 2 minus theta one. So we get the value uh, of specific heat capacity of water by this activity. Okay, the second activity to determine specific heat capacity of aluminium. So apparatus material needed, power supply, emission heater, 1 kilogram of aluminium block, stopwatch, thermometer and retort stand, tissue paper. Okay, uh, again, we, but now we use uh, aluminium block, uh, 1 kg. The aluminium block has two holes here, one to insert the immersion heater and another one for thermometer. So you just put a drops of oil into the hole so that it will produce uniform heat transfer to the, uh, from the heater to the aluminium block and from the uh, aluminium block to the thermometer. Okay? So you wrap the body of the aluminium with tissue paper to prevent heat loss to surrounding. Okay, so what we need uh, to record in this activity, so you record power of emission heater, heating time, how many seconds, mass of aluminium, here is 1 kilogram, so just write 1 kilogram, initial temperature, theta 1, and final temperature, theta 2, after the set time of heating. Uh. Okay, from the table, we can calculate the specific heat capacity of aluminium using the formula C equivalent to Q divided by M delta theta. Amount of heat required Q is equals to PT and delta theta is theta 2 minus theta 1. So we can calculate specific heat capacity of aluminium. So there are two activities for you all to determine uh, specific heat capacity. Okay now, due to the heat loss of surroundings, the value of specific heat capacity that determined from experiment is higher compared to the actual value. Why? Okay, we cannot get exactly the same as the actual value because our assumption is there is no heat loss surrounding, meaning heat energy supplied by heater equivalent to heat absorbed by water. That cannot be because there's always heat loss surrounding. When there is heat loss surrounding, the final temperature cannot rise higher. So this one will cause change in temperature become smaller. So when change in temperature is smaller from this relationship, 
we get higher specific heat capacity. That's the reason why the value determined from this experiment is larger than the actual value. So when you do this uh, experiment, you get the value. So you just write a discussion explaining that there is heat loss of surrounding that causes the change in temperature to decrease. Thus, the value of C that we get is larger as compared to the actual value. Okay, now look at the application of specific heat capacity. Selection building material of traditional houses in various climate zones. Look at here warm climate, okay, like in Malaysia, warm climate and cold climate. Okay, for the warm climate, eh, wood is used eh, because wood has a high specific heat capacity and gets hot slowly. In warm weather regions, traditional houses are built from wood, which functions as an insulator of heat from the scorching sun. So meaning not really hot, many hot eh, inside the house due to the wood that has high specific heat capacity. Okay. For the cold climate, in cold weather regions, traditional houses are also built from wood. Heat from fires laid in the wooden houses cannot flow out because wood function as a good heat insulator. Normally, the material with high specific heat capacity okay, uh, function as a good heat insulator, like a plastic wood and so on. Okay. Okay, next, cooking utensils. We have metal wok and clay pot. Okay, woks are made of metal with low specific heat capacity. Normally, the body eh, is made of material with low specific heat capacity. As such, food can be fried at high temperature in a short time because it can be heats up faster, so you can cook food faster. The handle is normally made of plastic or wood with higher specific heat capacity. So you can hold it during cooking. It does not become hot easily during cooking eh? because higher specific heat capacity heats up slower. Okay, look at the clay pot. Clay pot, on the other hand, are made of clay which has high specific heat capacity. As such, food can stay hot for a long pe uh, period, eh? cools down slower. The use clay pot normally is a slow cooking eh? process. It cooks slowly, but once it is cooked, it cools down also slower. So you can store food uh, hot for longer period. Okay, so we have a tips here. Okay, material with smaller C, uh, smaller specific heat capacity, heats up and cools down faster. Okay, material with larger C, heats up and cools down slower. Okay, another... Uh, Application here, we have car radiator system. So burning of fuel in the car engines produces large amount of heat. This heat needs to be released to avoid overheating the engine. So how to cool down the engine? So we use water because water has high specific heat capacity. So use as cooling agent. A pump will pump water into the engine block. Water will flow through the engine block to absorb heat produced. Hot water flows to the radiator. Cool air is sucked in by fans so that heat in the hot water can be released quickly through cooling fins. So the water used due to its high specific heat capacity. Okay, outer layer of the space capsule. Space capsule on its journey back to Earth it counters air resistance when entering the atmosphere. This friction increases the temperature and causes the space capsule to burn. Therefore, the outer layer of the space capsule is made of substance with high specific heat capacity and high melting point. So some, sometimes uh, the satellite or any uh, space debris uh, suddenly drop into the atmosphere of the Earth. So it will experience very high uh, air resistance. So this one will cause uh, uh, heat energy uh, to be produced at large amount. So that's why the material outside the space capsule is made of substance with high specific heat capacity and melting point okay, to prevent it from burn. Eh? Okay, production of lattice material and the construction of green buildings. What is green buildings? Not the green color buildings. Eh? So green building is the building that apply, that apply the uh, smart energy use. Eh? They can save energy. They can... Uh, uh, 
prevent uh, energy to be lost okay uh, so many efficiency in energy usage okay the diamond building energy commission is built with an insulating concrete roof that is roof fitted with insulators using styrofoam boards styrofoam has a high specific heat capacity and can reduce absorption of heat from surrounding to reduce temperature inside the building so means kept the surrounding in the building is not so hot it's a bit uh, not uh, in a hot surrounding so then they, they can reduce the usage of a con for example or fan thus they can reduce the uh, energy yeah, to be just lost like that okay so you can uh, discuss more or you can find more information on this uh, green building okay now the application is a sea breeze uh, during daytime okay now we discuss what exactly happened at the beach you can see this a uh, sea and land uh. so land has lower specific heat capacity than the sea therefore temperature on land rises more quickly than temperature in the sea during daytime the air on land become hot and rises upwards Cold air from the sea move towards the land as sea breeze. Okay, so cold air from the sea move towards land. We call it sea breeze. So this one occur during daytime. So we use the concept of specific heat capacity yeah, to explain this situation. Second one is the land breeze. This one occur at night time. So it's cooling hour. So sea has higher specific heat capacity than land. So temperature in the sea drops slowly than the temperature on land. Meaning the sea water is warmer eh, at night, but the land is only cold. Hot air above the sea rises upwards. Cold air above the land moves towards the sea. So we call it land breeze. So from the sea to land, we call it... Oh, sorry. From the land to sea, we call it land breeze. Eh? This one occurs during night time. Okay. Okay, now look at some of the problem solving. Because we have formula, of course, there will be calculation problem. Example 1, 0 0.5 kg metal block heated by 50 watt electric heater for 90 seconds. The temperature of the block rises from 20 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. Calculate the specific heat capacity of metal. Okay, you list down all the information. So the temperature uh, change or temperature rise delta theta 45 minus 20, 25 degrees Celsius. Mass of the block 0 0.5 kilogram. Power of heater 50 watt, heating time 90 second. Okay, formula that we need to use here. Specific heat capacity equivalent to Q divided by M delta theta. So Q here is PT, yeah? PT. So used SI unit here, power is watt, time is second. Okay, if given a minute, you need to convert to second. So you calculate, you get 360 Joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. So this is the specific heat capacity of the metal. Second uh, example, 20 gram of boiling water and 100 degrees Celsius is poured into a glass containing 200 gram of water at 28 degrees Celsius. Calculate the final temperature of the mixture water. So we have hot water and cold water. So the hot one will release heat. The cool one will absorb heat. So the mixture finally achieve one final temperature. Many temperatures suddenly become constant, eh? no longer increase. So that one we call it final temperature or temperature at thermal equilibrium. So we mark as Y. Let Y equals final temperature of mixture. So for boiling water, we put as M1, the mass, you know, change to kilogram, 0 0.02 kg. Temperature change, delta, theta 1. This is hot object. When release heat, its temperature drop, meaning the value of Y is smaller than 100. <coughs> Thus, 100 minus Y. So change in temperature for delta, theta 1. For water at 28 degrees Celsius, this one will absorb heat. When absorb heat, its temperature will increase, become Y. So the change in temperature, delta theta 2 equals to Y minus 28. So you must write correctly. Yeah? If this one you write wrongly, so your answer also will be wrong. Okay. So assumption that need to be, to be made in order to solve this problem is no heat is lost to surrounding. Meaning, heat released by 
20 gram of water is equals to heat absorbed by 200 gram of water. Then we can write Q1 equals to Q2. Q1 if M1 C1 delta theta 1, Q2 M2 C2 delta theta 2. Now the C is same because we are using the same material water. So C, C, then the C can be cancelled actually on eh, both sides. So you substitute all the values, so solve it eh, mathematically, so you get Y equivalent to 34.55 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the final temperature of mixture is 34.55 degrees Celsius. So for all uh, calculation problems, one assumption that we made is no heat is lost to surrounding. Okay. So at the end of this uh, topic 4.2, there is one project that can be carried out. We can, we can make it as a project-based learning PBL. This is about the cluster homes. Huh? So cluster homes are homes which resemble terrace houses. However, three walls of the house are shared with the houses behind and beside it. You can look at here. Photograph 4.2 shows example of cluster home which has only one door for exit and entrance while windows are only in the front part of the home. The shape of the home can, uh, can minimize the use of land. However, when our country experienced the El Nino phenomenon with extreme rise in temperature, residents of terrace cluster home experienced extreme heat. So it's very hot eh, to stay in this uh, type of house. So what you do, based on the above information, analyze the situation by listing the fact that problems related to the condition of extreme temperature in cluster homes. So you, you try to identify what are the problems eh, about the structure of the house and try to figure out okay, any idea or solution to solve the problems. Okay? So what you do, you can sketch eh, a model based on your solution. So this one will become one of the project based learning. Okay, uh, so that's all for this topic. So you can go and read more eh, on this information and do more exercise, especially a problem solving or calculation problems. Okay, that's all. Uh, do subscribe, like and tap for more oncoming videos. Support physics teacher.